Working on my 5 inch gauge sterling single, this is remachining the chimney. So, did the alum powder remove the broken tap in the chimney mounting? Well, yes, it did. I can now poke a pin through every one of the holes, and there's not a broken tap to be seen anywhere. So, just to sum up, by putting this part with the broken tap into a mixture of alum and water in a pan, boiling it up for about 15 minutes, and then leaving the part in there for 24 hours, the tap just disappeared. In this clip I'm showing the general arrangement as to how this part fits inside the smoke box and supports the chimney. The bottom bit is called a petticoat pipe, which focuses the blast of steam up the chimney when the engine's running, but I don't think this is really necessary, as the blast pipe is very close to the base of the chimney inside the smoke box anyway. There are three reasons why I need to remachine this chimney, three reasons why I can't live with it. The first reason is the chimney doesn't taper sufficiently. If you compare it with the one on the drawing, you'll see that it's not quite as tapered. And the other reason is the top part of the chimney is too long, it looks wrong. And the third reason is obvious, the thickness of the top cap. I'm going to machine this down and make it look a lot better. So how am I going to do this? I can't grip it really by the flange around the top cap, that would just damage the flange. So I'm going to make a mandrel. This is a piece of brass that I put in the chuck. And first of all, I take a rough cut all the way down it. Brass is not ideal for mandrels in any shape, way or form, it's too soft. I should have made this out of steel. The reason for using brass is I didn't have a piece of steel big enough to do this job. At the moment in this clip the lathe is running in real time. The tool is quite sharp and it's cutting quite nicely. I tend to use mainly the same lathe speed for quite a lot of operations. But for machining this piece of brass I could spin the work a lot faster. The only problem is that the brass chips that you can see flying off at the moment would suddenly fly off a lot further and I'd be covered in sharp pieces of brass and I can really do without that. So I tend to run at this speed, it's not perfect, but at least the brass chippings are under control. In this clip I have speeded up the lathe but that's only by speeding up the video. And as you can see, the chippings appear to fly off a lot faster and further, even on the speeded up video. I need this mandrel to be a tight fit in the existing internal diameter of the chimney. So here I'm doing some simple test cuts near the end to find out how much of the material I need to remove. And I find the best way to do it is to try the part in place, I don't need to use a pair of calipers or a micrometer. By repeatedly trying the chimney in place on the end of the mandrel, I eventually find the correct diameter for the chimney to be a tight push fit on the mandrel. And in this clip I've arrived at the diameter that I need, so it's time to cut it all the way down and see what happens. Yes, that fits very tightly, too tightly, so I'm taking the finest of cuts down the work. I could use a piece of emery cloth for this, but I thought no, I'll do it properly like an engineer and use the cutting tool. And now the chimney is a perfect fit on the mandrel, all I need to do is gently tap it in place. And for this job I'm using a special soft hammer that I bought a while back. This is a Teng Tools soft hammer. It has two distinctly different faces. At this end the face is quite hard, and it has a softer rubber face at the other end. A bit like a girlfriend I used to know. Anyway, that's enough of that. So, the chimney is on the mandrel, and now I'm machining the end of the chimney. I'm not going to take very heavy cuts, because don't forget this is a brass mandrel, not a very heavy duty steel one. I'm starting the job by reducing the depth of the chimney's top cap. As you can see by the drawing, on the top cap, the part of the chimney above the centre line is slightly smaller than the part of the chimney below the centre line. As I'm doing this job, I have the drawing positioned in front of me on a shelf, so I can see exactly how much metal I need to remove. This is a good exercise for what I call the calibrated eye. If you take too much off it, then you've made a mess of the job. If you take too little off it, then you might as well have not started in the first place. So with my eye firmly planted on the drawing, I take off what I consider to be exactly the right amount. Then I finish the job by cleaning it up, first of all by taking the edge off with a file, and then I finish up the cleanup job using some emery cloth, and you will notice that I've folded this so that my fingers are not in contact with the work. The next job is to bore the centre of the chimney. Now I really have to be careful with this. If I take too much off, I've got a major problem, because I'm going to taper the chimney as well. So really, I should use instruments for this, but once again, I'm using what I call the calibrated eye. Also, up to a point, the calibrated ear is a good idea, 
because by listening to the sound that the job makes, it's often an indication that something's wrong. And the sound this is making is saying to me, please sharpen the cutting tool, it's very blunt. So I did eventually for the finishing cuts, but I just thought I'd leave it in making this horrible noise so that beginners watching these videos can relate to what's happening. While I'm doing this job, I'd just like to mention something. A viewer messaged me a while back and he said, why am I always having to go to engineers? Well, I really didn't think I was. I have the utmost respect for engineers and machinists who can do jobs to a high standard. I have personal friends who are very, very good engineers and their work is astounding. So I really do not ever have a go at engineers, unless they're really bad ones. The only people I have a go at on this channel are trolls or keyboard warriors who don't really watch the video, they just watch a little bit of it and then type a nasty message. These comments don't hurt my feelings in the slightest. Often some of these comments provide me with material to include in future videos like this one. So just in case any viewers out there are thinking about typing long-winded, nasty comments, don't bother, it's a pointless exercise. And I really don't mind the nasty comments, I'm far from perfect, but please remember that the first thing that happens when you finish your essay of nasty comments, it first of all comes to me for approval as to whether I want to let it go on the channel. And the first thing I do is look at the sender's channel, which always says, this channel has no content, what a surprise. If you send a computer link, that never goes on the channel automatically. What I'm doing here is turning the taper on the centre part of the chimney, but the diameter of the base part of the chimney is just a little bit too big, so I'm using some emery cloth to reduce this before taking the final cut on the main chimney body. It's worth remembering that the bottom part of the chimney has a very special curve and you cannot machine this on a standard lathe, you have to do it by hand. To turn tapered parts in a lathe, you need to use the cross slide in a special way. First of all, you lock the saddle to the bed with the clamp bolt, and then I need to change the angle of the top slide, and this is done in different ways on different lathes, but on this old Boxford lathe, on the cross slide at each side are two Allen grub screws, and by slackening these off, you can rotate the top slide to any position you want. And the further the mark gets away from zero, the steeper the taper will be. So it's a good idea to test this before you put the lathe into power mode. You may have noticed that I'm using a parting tool for cutting the taper. And why did I do this? Well, it's in the tool post and it's more convenient and quicker than fitting a new tool. All I had to do was grind a small radius on each end of the parting tool, so I got a nice rounded finish at each end of the tapered part of the chimney. The taper is just as I want it, but the bottom part of the chimney is a little bit on the thick side, so once again, using emery cloth, because I can't use a cutting tool on this part, I reduced it slightly, then I took yet another finishing cut. So what was wrong with the taper in the first place? Well, it wasn't enough for my liking. When I look at photographs of sterling singles, particularly number one, the chimney is a main feature. It's not parallel, if it's parallel it looks totally wrong. Simon Hudson at the Steam Workshop really is an authority on many details of many steam locomotives. I've never met anybody quite like him. And when I asked Simon about the shape of sterling chimneys, he pointed out that they did vary over the years. The chimney on number one is quite different to the chimney on later models. But I really don't like the chimney when it's nearly parallel. This shape, I think, is about right for me. I really do like Stirling Singles as a steam locomotive, and before I was born, Stirling Singles like this one, although the full size, ran on the railway in the town where I live, the Great Northern Railway. I got quite a good finish with the boring tool, but I thought, well, I'll make it look even better. And to remove the tool marks, I'm using a honing tool. I bought this from the auction site that we all know and love called eBay, and it's a really useful thing to have in the workshop. By adjusting the collar, it puts more pressure or less pressure on the inside of the part. To help prevent the grinding stones becoming clogged by the metal particles, I'm using some light machine oil on this job, and by repeatedly moving the tool back and forth like this, what happens is, everything gets nicely polished inside the chimney. The chimney is still sat on the mandrel, so don't forget, it's not this diameter all the way down. There's a bit of a collar at the bottom, which is not an issue. There's plenty of room there, to evacuate the steam from the cylinders. All I have to do now is remove the mandrel, tap out the mandrel with a piece of wood, and then fit the chimney to the engine, and it looks like this. And to my eye, that really looks like a chimney on a sterling single, even though it is sat on the sideboard. That's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.